They're listening. They, We're live. Adam, I mean, then that means Adam got to the, hear us talking about how good looking he is. And um, mm -hmm. Tiffany is here. Sabrina. Oh my gosh, there's so many good people here, you guys. Welcome, welcome. We are planning to have fun today, and we're really excited to have you all um, here to engage in a conversation with us. Truly a vulnerable inquiry about how we can all be better um, leaders, servants, and people in relationship through our communications. And um, just thank you for coming, and I'll hand it to you, Bill. Thank you. And we'll go ahead and... Uh... Get a couple of visuals up for you guys today. So uh, hopefully you all are here to learn how to have emotionally charged conversations with ease. We're going to be doing some role playing. Uh, we're going to make it interactive. We <laughs> uh, ask that uh, if you feel like you want to interact with us, please send us uh, comments, questions uh, through the chat. Uh, send it to uh, all panelists and we'll make sure to be checking that and use your feedback to interact with and uh, address it as we go through this. <laughs> And uh, just some primary objectives for today. Uh, the primary, I would say, is increasing awareness. I think a lot of our communication uh, becomes automatic and becomes uh, habitual. And the more that we can increase our awareness, the more that we can consciously shift how we are, how we listen, and how we communicate. And for the stars of today's show, uh, we have uh, the wonderful Leslie Jones, who just addressed you all there at the beginning. and. Uh, Leslie founded Spiral Method, uh, which is a methodology for building community and conscious connection that has uh, today's content embedded in it naturally. Uh, so you'll see how that kind of comes out and we'll kind of uh, link the bridge from what we're talking about today to how the Spiral Method implements that in its work. Leslie's traveled around the country and the world activating Spiral Method communities. She's also been an executive coach for leaders uh, for over 25 years. Uh, myself, uh, I am a community builder that uh, founded an organization called Good Cinema a couple years ago as a platform for communities to come together and have thought-provoking conversations around issues that were affecting us uh, individually, societally, and uh, globally. And I uh, am honored to be a part of uh, Spiral Method now, helping to spread this movement of connection around the world as well. And uh, we also have Doc, or Dr. Martin Cuddlehut. Uh, Doc is an expert on communication and listening. Uh, wrote a book called Listen Till You Disappear. And he's coached entrepreneurs for over 22 years. Uh, very honored to have him as a part of today's webinar. And uh, the three of us will be doing some role playing and interacting, so uh, all of you get to uh, be a part of that. And without further ado, we'll dive right in uh, to the formula. Doc, take us away. Hi, good morning. Take a look at this formula. Um, if you're going to take notes today, I'll give you a moment to write these five pieces down so that then we can really just be in sync after that. So take a moment, write, write them down. And while you do so, I'll explain where the formula comes from. So we get a lot of requests for coaching and facilitation and especially right now, because it's a very emotionally charged environment in our world. And um, people are looking for easeful ways to communicate and make life happen now. So there was sort of a, you know, a cross fertilization of people coming to us with requests and us seeing places where the spiral method and in particular connection is wanting uh, that had us look at the ways that we've been uh, forced into each other's faces in part by the COVID event and um, also forced to have to figure out new ways of making money and, and thriving. And you multiply that by the fear and the divisiveness in the world and you get disconnection. So this formula that we're going to dive into now is about it's designed to make connection. And can I just add something to this? Um, the best of the best communicators are struggling right now, right? So what I'm noticing all over Facebook and in my own um, 
my own system and with a lot of my colleagues is that we are struggling. We, we have these skill sets, but we're um, not necessarily able to access them. So we want to talk about that today. Have you guys all looking at, you know, what skills that you have and what resources do you need to develop in yourself at this point? Because we are in a different world and it's, it's trigger happy right now, right? And even us, we're kind of, you know, have lost some of that skill set and we can restore that. So keep, keep looking at yourself as we go through the conversation. And I think actually I'm up next. Um, we're going to start with my one of my big failures a couple weeks ago um, and you know here's here's the other distinction that comes up around this is that a lot of people are um i i, I, got, I learned the term imperfect action recently and i love that because especially right now, one of the themes that's happening, especially for white folks with all the racial tensions, is that we're um, not taking imperfect action. We're scared to say the wrong thing. We're scared to fall down and screw up, right? And so this is an example where I took some imperfect action and um, I had to recover and I learned so much about it. So I want to just lay, lay that out quickly. Um, I went to a town hall meeting with 3,000 people on racial issues, and it was a profound two-hour experience, and at the end, we took a pledge to call out white supremacy and really call it out no matter what the cost, and we're probably going to lose clients and maybe even lose friends, and that's okay. I'm taking the pledge. Really inspiring. I wake up the next morning, and I go on to Facebook, and one of my clients has put it up a post that really triggered me. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I took a pledge, I'm gonna go for it. And I didn't even realize I was triggered. In hindsight, of course, I was just gonna go. And I called him out aggressively and publicly um, and pretty much called him a white supremacist, which I know in my heart he's not. And it, my, my tagline to all of that was, um, and if you're willing to learn, I'm here to educate you. <laughs> so, um, some mistakes, right? Some mistakes right off the bat. And if you go back to the slide for a minute, um, I think fundamentally, the, 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 I set the tone right there, right? I, I went after him. I attacked him. I was triggered myself. And I set myself up as superior, which are the exact things that he started to respond to, right? And so now I'm a communication expert, and I'm sitting here in a um, public battle, basically. Um, these are some of the things, right? I did not go slow. I had to really start looking at what is my intention here? Like, am, am I even, am I willing to engage and how am I going to engage and at what point do I stop engaging, right? Because there felt like a point where I was almost getting bullied. Um, there, there were numerous things that were happening in the communications that, um, where I had to step back and stop engaging at one point, right? And um, well, even if I could interrupt, just yeah, even, please. even that you got to watch very closely. We say some things that we, you know, and, and we kind of hide from ourselves the real meaning. Like, if you'd like to learn, or I, if I could teach you something about this, that's uh, is that you got to look. Sometimes that is a real, authentic willingness to engage. But it, it, sometimes it's, it's like, I just want to tell you something and not have any response, actually. I don't want to engage. So you got to really look closely. Right. And the curious thing about this interaction, and I think many interactions that are happening, is that I actually really do love this person. And I don't believe that he's a white supremacist. And I do know a lot more than him on the topic. Right, and so I am committed to engaging him. And, and the way I went about that was 
created something completely different than what I actually was interested in creating, right? So we did recover. It took about two weeks and a lot of energy, a lot of back and forth. Um, so we can keep going, but this is kind of the example we're going to use today as we illustrate some of these communication points. I'd like to ask a quick follow-up question on that. Um, the, the bullet that always speaks to me so much is listening is more important than speaking. I'd like to know what you learned by listening instead of speaking. Mm -hmm. Well, I learned that he was, um, he's trying to engage and educate people as well, which was not my interpretation of him in that post. Um, I, I started listening to my own triggers and understanding my own triggers and that, that I was actually attacking instead of list, uh, you know, engaging. And um, the other piece was that when we finally got on the phone, we were able to go really slow and set the tone for that conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I started with just speaking my interest in listening to him and apologizing for telling him that I was going to educate him. Right, like that set the tone for, and then he was able to tell me what he was really interested in for our dialogue as well. So those are a few key points. I think there's probably 10 of them if I dig well, in. One that you didn't mention just now, but it was right there, is that you, you heard what you really wanted in the relationship. Oh yeah, good, yep. Well, what a beautiful segue to our next point here. Uh, which is listen to self. Mm -hmm. Doc, do you want to speak to this? Well, let's just look at it first. So there are triggers. Um, there's what we're aware of or, or not aware of. There's how you're being. Like, are you being frenetic? Are you being calm? Are you being helpful? Are you being antagonistic? Boundaries. Like, you know, I don't want to go there with you. I don't want you in this space with me. Um, am I listening to myself or them? Or Sorry, I said it the other way around. Them or myself? Um, you know, just, it's a very basic something to listen to. Is, am, am I listening to my own thoughts or am I listening to what he's saying? Crucial. And then are you listening from curiosity? Like, I really want, I really want to know how he got to that, you know, where he's coming from, what he really needs, or from righteousness. Like, I'm going to be right here. I'm, I, I'm listening for how I can prove myself, how I can win this argument, right? All of that. The one thing that I want to just acknowledge about listening um, to yourself here is that, um, it's it's tricky it is it is actually tricky there's um there's a lot going on you are doing a juggling act when you're especially if it's a heated conversation there's a lot to pay attention to and i just want to acknowledge that this is a dynamic situation it's it, it's not about having your blinders on so you can just make your point obviously there's no communication going on there but it's really about hosting all of this going on and staying disciplined in your focus. And so in my example, um, I didn't even know that I was being righteous. I thought that I was taking a stand and that I was being curious and that I was really, you know, I knew something about this person. Um, and I, that I was listening deeply to who he was. And that's why I was going to go talk to him. <laughs> you know, like, there was a, a real goal to change something. And one of the keys is that we're, you know, we're meeting people where they are, right? Like, and if I'm so caught up in this, I can't possibly meet people where they are. And that's what happened on the phone call, you know, finally. But, um, yeah. 
Yeah, and I see these as muscles. I mean, I, righteousness is certainly a muscle that I was flexing for a long time. And, uh, you know, as of late, and certainly a lot of kudos to the spiral method for having this implemented is, is the curiosity muscle, really flexing that and, and focusing on, you know, what's my objective here? And, and is it really to learn? Is it to be curious? And naturally, that's my, that's my state. But I think a lot of times, uh, at least myself, I get triggered. And so that throws me right into the red zone. I get righteous. And it's like, well, I need to prove this person wrong instead of, well, maybe it's more helpful to be curious and understand their perspective and why they're saying what they are. Yeah. How, I, how I can make the difference that I want to make. Yeah. 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 But it's kind of like a party. There's a party going on. I mean, think about it. When you walk into a party, you see all these people you want to talk to and all these things you want to say and stuff you want to do and the food you want to eat. That's what's, it's like that. It's bursting forth in your head. And so I just, you know, you are doing a juggling act here. You need, you know, to acknowledge it and have fun with it like wow i just got triggered wow i really want to say how much i love him right it's all there so have fun with it yeah and and i i we already spoke to this but i want to underscore the going slow you know my it's like a like landmines out there on facebook at least um and you know, and in the groups that I'm a part of, I was just in a group this morning and, you know, you listen to one person speak and you know, there's like, your mind is getting triggered with your opinions, your judgments, your, you know, what, how you're feeling about what they're saying. And just to be able to go slow and step back and look at what's my intention right now and what's relevant to the conversation. Really important skill right now, more than ever, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, next as listening to self is listening to others. And um, the, the thing that really pokes out to me and, and would love uh, both of your thoughts on this is the purpose and productivity. I think, uh, I think so many conversations we go in again in this automatic way, instead of focusing on what is our purpose for connecting around this and, and how, are we, how are we trying to make this productive? What, what's our aim? Uh, Doc, uh, and I think this was specifically your words uh yeah would you want to comment on that well yeah i mean there's the what this brings up is the difference between the the reactive state and the creative state right so if you're if you're going slow you can see am i just having a reaction that's not, you know it's it's just like billiard balls hitting each other on the table or Am I um, focused on where, what, what I want to produce, uh, the, the purpose of being in this conversation, what I hope to produce? It's very easy to get off. And so for listening for that, and, and what helps to listen for it is to share that. Here's my purpose in having this conversation with you. Here's what I think that we could produce out of this or where this could go. Right. I mean, I'm chuckling at the, um, my, my purpose of educating people and, you know, noticing at what point I have to be aware of at what point is education happening in the relationship and at what point are, there's not an education. We're not having a conversation to uplift and educate, mm -hmm. right? That's a time to stop, withdraw, whatever, you know, pause, go slow. I mean, we've all had those moments where, like, you get an email, even, right? And you're just like, oh, bam, I'm going to respond to that. And you're right on the reactivity. And then you're just about to send it and you go, no, wait a minute, this is not going to help at all. And you just delete the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other, the other piece about listening to other, especially around emotionally charged conversations is the listening to the content, what's coming at you versus the context or the background. Um, and I found this, if, if we can slow down enough to do that, I think this is the most powerful listening skill. Um, you know, I had a, 
uh, the best example that I use when I'm working with people is um, a couple that goes to a hotel and they, you know, the man has taken his wife for a really wonderful weekend and you know, they're just so excited and can't wait and they walk up to the room and it's disheveled, there's some lipstick on the cup from some other folks that were there, right? And he goes down to the front desk and he's just screaming at the front desk person about the state of the room. Well, if the front desk person just interacts with the content, what the room looks like, they're just gonna keep spiraling down. But if they can get a, um, related to the background, the commitment of a powerful weekend with his wife, and they can speak to that, then they're going to actually progress to get the man calmed down. Right. So this, you know, if I find always listening for what's the undercurrent, what's not getting acknowledged, what is the commitment here? Um, in my example that, you know, I just want to apologize for being superior in my communication. Right. That made a huge difference right there. Like we both exhaled. Well, that's a, that's beautiful. And it, it brings in that dancing part of this, the unknown part of it. Like, all you said was, I know that that is not what I meant. I, I apologize, that did not represent who I am in this conversation. Um, and who knows where that's gonna lead, right? But that was what, me, that it kind of, it's a communication, that acknowledgement puts us in an open field. Like now, now's when the real communication begins right so there is that it's important to acknowledge that there is that element of just not knowing once i apologize what will happen or um once that um i acknowledge the, the pain that I, it caused me or whatever that you when you're listening to yourself and others you you when you acknowledge it that it just opens the field and then we can begin to dance Right. And, and Jill, this is really, really good comment here. It matters where you are educating from, like a place of you're right and they're wrong, which is what I was doing, or that they're not educated, or a true exploration, right? And that, that exploration, thank you, Jill, is what allows for education, awareness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh, so we've got a couple questions. I think one of them here uh, would make sense to to dive into. One of them was kind of already answered through what we've been talking about, I believe. The first was how how might one stop being overwhelmed during emotionally charged conversations? Uh, oh good. Which um, I think was just addressed through what you said. Uh, so I'd like to bring up the next one here. Let me just add, you, you want to add something there, please? Yeah, I I don't think it's helpful to think in terms of wanting to stop yourself from feeling anything yeah so i think it's better to express the overwhelm mm -hmm. rather than stop it yep and i would say yeah so permission for overwhelm and um acknowledgement overwhelm is you know inside of overwhelm we're probably going into a fight or flight state we're losing our frontal lobe we're losing our resources right so just by way of acknowledging like i'm feeling overwhelmed right now i i need to take a pause um like you know finding your center inside of overwhelm because if if we're if we are staying engaged we're probably not going to be that successful at moving the conversation to the next level it's it's huge yeah yeah great distinction thank you for that uh, and the next one is, uh, how might we determine when the other person isn't open to communication versus wanting to state their point of view? Well, mm -hmm. I would determine that in communication rather than in your head. <laughs> right? Otherwise, it, it never was a communication. Anyway. So that's connect on that, you know, ask about it. You know, there might, it might not be the, the way that you brought it up is the way that they want to get into it, but it doesn't mean that they don't want to communicate. So I, I would, you know, bring it up, say, is the, can, we, can we work on it? Do you want to talk? And if not, great. 
then there might come a point where they've said they want to, but they're not really connecting with you. Mm -hmm. And that, again, it's about acknowledging that, like, here's what I just experienced. I'm opening this up, you're closing it down. And so I think it's probably better that we, you know, reconvene at another time or, or stop and take a break and find a new way, that sort of thing. So that's my response. Well, and I just, the example we talked about yesterday, guys, um, another one of my wonderful learning episodes in my career, um, when I, I really did violate a um, confidentiality agreement with a client, and um, it had to do with his daughter, actually, and I was coaching both of them, and I shared something with her that I shouldn't have shared, and he called me, and he was very angry, rightly so. And he, I mean, we were on the phone for five or 10 minutes and he was just raw. And I just, I'm so sorry. I get it. You're right. I apologize. What can I do? Nothing was helping. And so I finally said, what is your intention right now? And he stopped and he said to get my heart rate down. And I said, I can't help you with that. Like, I really can't help you with that. So why don't you go do that? And then we can come back and talk. And we, we are friends to this day, right? Um, but just backpedaling and handling all that content doesn't make a difference. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Now, uh, mirror and acknowledge. Uh, this we're going to dive into uh, some role play as well to show uh, ways of reflecting back as ways of acknowledging being heard and mirroring uh, the communication kind of coming at you. I think a lot of times there's a lot of things get lost in translation, even if they're directly said to someone, how it's interpreted might be different. And uh, I think this is a wonderful exercise for showing how we can make sure that what is said is being heard as it was intended. Yeah, so um, we're just winging this, you guys, like to, to be present and spontaneous and real. Um, that's what our work is about and who we all are. And so um, it's, Bill, the question for you, um, what are you currently seeing on Facebook that is, or any platform that you're on, but what are you seeing that's polarizing and triggering you in particular? Uh, for me, given the time, it's, it's things having to do with, uh, I guess with police in general and police reform, defunding police uh, and both sides of things. It's, it's something that's uh, affected me personally. And so I, I have kind of, I guess, a strong stance against the current system of mass incarceration and, and militarized policing that currently exists. And, uh, and so I, I see very divisive conversations around that and then you know just seeing them kind of raises something within myself um, and uh, it's something that i try to not engage with because i know how things get online uh, but it's something that i notice is a lot is very divisive and and i have kind of a strong stance on one side of it and yeah Mm -hmm. And so you guys, for everyone listening, Doc is going to reflect and kind of mirror and acknowledge, um, but just notice for you listening what's happening in your own system just on the topic of the police defunding the systems in our culture, what's happening on Facebook. So pay attention to yourself right now. Yeah, and I'm just going to throw, uh, before Doc, before you mirror back, I just want to kind of put more of my uh, statement forward so that you can mirror back kind of how I feel about it. So, uh, yeah, so I feel that the police uh, should be defunded because our system is very reactive and it puts a lot of money into something that has been uh, for hundreds of years a racist institution and uh, instead of us putting money towards education and health, we're putting it towards the effects of not having those things in marginalized communities. Got it. Well, that's a mouthful. First of all, I just acknowledge that you're not a trivial guy. <laughs> don't say that, you guys. <laughs> what? I said, don't say that's a mouthful to anyone. <laughs> 
Why? I'm, I'm, I don't get it. Oh, it uh, just felt like, like, wow, Bill, okay. <laughs> Sorry, no, 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 what I mean, what I mean to acknowledge is that this is not a trivial, you're, you're not like thinking about trivialities. You, Leslie said, what's on your mind in Facebook? Like some people are on Facebook, to, you know, for very trivial reasons or superficial reasons. And you're, you are affected and affected at a deep level is the first thing I want to acknowledge, right? That's what I meant by a mouthful. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I hear that this has been, you said, it's touched your own personal life. And the things that, about it that, you know, there's incarceration, there's violence, there's racism, these are, and uh, lack of education, lack of health, these are all things that have, that you've been touched by. And so I, I not only hear that you're against funding police, but what I really hear more than that, because that's, you know, that lives in a very complicated legal realm um, and governmental realm. But what I hear is that you're for community, you're for integration, you're for heartfelt connection and, and education and health. Hmm. So have I got you right? Is there anything else that, that I didn't acknowledge there? Yeah, I, I would say uh, that's all right. Um, I would also add, um, you, uh, you kind of added some things in there that I didn't specifically say. You were right, but, uh, but you may not have been. Uh, so I just wanna make that distinction too, that sometimes we add our own kind of interpretation of things. And while you were right, uh, because you probably also know me, uh, that we may get things wrong sometimes in mirroring that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doc, do you agree with Bill? I'm just curious. About defunding the police? Mm -hmm. Not wholly, no. Mm -hmm. I, um, I think that good, uh, good public safety is worth paying for. I think it's about the quality, the, improving the quality of the police force and, our, and the quality of the non-police force's relationship to the police, I think that's more the issue than defunding them. And so, Doc, what do you have to manage in your system to be able to listen and reflect when you disagree? Um, the, the technicalities, the, the, you know, the, like, what does that mean in terms of implementation and all of that? I was going for more like feeling Bill and what motivates his, his saying what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So I, I like put all the heady stuff to the side and the figuring out part and just felt his heart. Great, which is also context versus content. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And instead of being here, it's here. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for saying that. That, that really helped me kind of understand how you reflected. And it's interesting hearing what you were saying. You know, I still have these kind of like physical feelings in my body when there's someone disagreeing, but I'm, I'm really making honest effort to kind of shift into, well, why might he be saying this? Well, probably because he has a whole lifetime of different experiences than I do. And that shaped his perspectives and maybe it might do me some good to be more curious and, and listen to, to find, you know, why his perspective is what it is so that I can have a more well-rounded one myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, um, I mean, I think it, part of this conversation is also agree to disagree. And this statement has really bothered me personally for years because to me, agree to disagree feels like we're cutting off an inquiry. And so, I'm actually curious what you guys think of this is, you know, are there times where it's appropriate to say I agree to disagree? Um, I'm interested in a higher level or higher type of conversation called inquiry and curiosity and common ground and solutions instead of all of our opinions all the time. And, and that feels to me like the leveling up that we're doing right now is moving into, you know, or what the opportunity is at least is to stop agreeing to disagree or battling our opinions. 
Well, this brings up the, uh, one of the next, the, meant be the next slide, which is about cre creating the future. Okay. Uh, well, the next one's choose how to be, which I think is a good oh, transition all right. to that. Both. Yeah, we'll, we'll hop onto it. We need to go there first, yeah. Well, go ahead, right. Cho cho okay, so part of my um, choice is to not engage in opinion-oriented conversations. <laughs> say it in a positive way. That's what you're not going to do. Say what, what are you going to do? Yeah, exactly. Um, focus on connection and solution and um, vulnerability and learning. Now, that's really powerful. I mean, uh, I'd love to hear a little bit more how that played out when you got on the phone with this gentleman, um, that there was that heated, right? Because it must have taken vulnerability to say like, you know, I'm calling you up. I want to communicate about this in order to create connection. Like, how did that go over? Um... <laughs> Well, we texted first, we texted a little bit to, um, and I invited him to come into a conversation. Mm -hmm. um, he let me know in those texts that he wasn't emotionally triggered at that point. And I don't know if he ever was, honestly, I was. I don't know if he was ever emotionally triggered. Um, so we, we started out, and then again, I apologized. Right, I really, I really apologize for my own righteousness. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that this is choosing who to be and how to be in that relationship. And I just, I just published my uh, newsletter today is all about how the seed of all of our relationships is that relationship we have to ourselves in that critical moment, in that emotionally charged moment. Right, you chose to be vulnerable, and that's what did, that's what allowed what was a heated, you know, confrontation to become something soft, where actual an actual exchange could take place. And let me just say, I mean, agree to disagree was one of the sticking points, and um, he started writing every day, quoting my words and speaking to can you believe a community leader would um would squash conversation like this or would stop you know whatever his interpretation of agree to disagree and this went on for about a week right and this this kind of um i was at risk of losing not only a client but having a lost relationship as well as a public um, denouncement of my leadership, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, I was detached. I was willing to let that all fall out that way. And the restoration of our relationship, we both up leveled, and his his words are changing, and my words are changing. And he's he just exposed us to six thousand people last weekend, and texted me about you know how much he's sharing this work right that just is so refreshing to see that we both were able to get to a new place not possible if we if 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 we weren't willing and vulnerable <laughs> yeah and just a, a real quick kind of distinction here there's there's certain words here that cultivate connection versus disconnection. Uh, and I think this theme kind of goes with the using words to create versus to describe. Uh, Leslie, I think you, uh, you say this very eloquently. Can you kind of chime in on this? Well, yeah, so um, I learned this a long time ago, uh, this, this idea that we, we usually use words to describe our world that's kind of how we're raised, most of us at least, is using words to describe our world instead of using words to create our world. And the example that I, someone told me at some point 20 years ago or something was of an umpire who, the first umpire says, um, I call it how I see it. 
And the second umpire says some version of, I see it and then I think about it and then I call it. And the third umpire says, it is what I call it, right? That's a declaration, a declarative ownership of the way that we use our words and that we are going to create our world with our words. These, these, this list here in front of us are, the, are different styles of communication or different stances around communication. And inside of Spiral Method in leading groups, that we practice what's on the left here, right? That it, we're, it's structured to increase our emotional intelligence and understand and pay attention to the ways that we communicate and the impact of them. And so, for example, um, like coddling or caretaking is something when, when someone is sharing and maybe they start getting upset about something, many of us jump in and we try to give advice and coddle and caretake, and then it's no longer a safe environment to share vulnerably because all the attention is going to move to us. So in Spiral Method, we address that through the method itself. We don't, we don't coddle. We don't... Um, caretake. We don't give advice unless it's asked for, just by way of example. So, you know, this is, this is all automatic communication, you guys. We're all guilty, ongoingly, of judgment, manipulation, sarcasm, superiority, right? Everything. It's about awareness, because if we can see this in ourselves, then we actually have a choice. Yeah, and, uh, and on the term, or excuse me, on the line of creation, uh, Doc, to the slide you were waiting for here is uh, is creating the future. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so I think there, I, there was a question that was asked in the chat that I just want to acknowledge. We might want to get back to somebody said, "Well, how do you deal with somebody who's being triggered?" And um, so we could, if you want, we could go back to that at some point. But uh, maybe I should do it now. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, just to speak to that question that was asked in the chat, let's see if I can get it exactly right. Mm -hmm. How do you or do you continue the communication with somebody who is triggered without the awareness that they are? Um, the, this, is a, this goes back to the mirroring. You have to get in their energy, right? If they're being triggered and they don't know it, you have to get, you have to be triggered in a way. You have have to acknowledge like wow your your energy is triggering me you have to get in their same energy if you're going to move the energy any other direction if you are cool as a cucumber while they're being triggered then it's going to trigger them even more right and so you that's the first thing is mirror their energy so that then you can move it like acknowledge that triggered is in the room right mm -hmm. that's that's the the main response there. So if you want, we can go back to create a future. Um, so, uh, you know, this is, this is the, the moment where, you know, you, you could just leave and then there, the, the connection gets lost. So this is about preserving the connection, maintaining, sustaining, nurturing the connection that you've just opened up by being vulnerable. And so it's about creating something to live for, right? Something in the future, that, that's something that's possible uh, by our being connected. Um, it could be a mutual goal, like, okay, you know, then let's, let's make X, Y, Z happen together. Or it could be just the next step. Oftentimes in business, it's just a matter of saying, okay, you're going to do that. I'm going to do this and we'll, we'll meet again in a week and, you know, and um, hold each other accountable. But sometimes it's that simple, but it's important that some future get created. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, as we kind of come back around, uh, that is that there is the formula. First, setting the tone and uh, slowing down and, and making sure that there's an objective and, and really listening to yourself and, and what are you looking to gain, listening to the other and uh, really hearing them, uh, then practicing the mirroring and acknowledging, uh, making sure that what you did here was what was intended 
and that you're able to reflect that back. Then choosing how to be, choosing how you want to uh, be in the conversation, how you want to, uh, uh, what type of words you want to be using, how you want to then create uh, what is then possible uh, with those words and, and with the way that you're showing up. Uh, Doc or Leslie, how would you like to kind of uh, sum this up before we proceed? Well, I just want to name again, I mean, I don't know if I said this as clearly in my example that we've been working with. We promised to stay engaged and to give each other the benefit of the doubt and to, we, we discussed private versus public, you know, Facebook versus us, the two of us having a conversation. Um, and inside of the apologies, there, there was also a future created. Like, um, I understand he would like to be educated. Um, we've since sent each other numerous resources to, for the sake of expanding our awareness, right? Um, all of that was creating a future that was, wasn't happening otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I, I think you've summarized it pretty well, but I just want, I want to share a little tool. If you could, there's that slide that showed the different ways of, of behavior, the different, I made a little laminated card for myself that has these ways of being on either side. And I keep this right here at my desk in front of my computer so that when I'm in a tense conversation, an energetic conversation, you know, a confrontation, I can just look at this simple little net and notice what I, which side I'm on, how I'm being, and then choose from the other side a, a better way to be. So it's a cute little tool. Yeah. yeah, and and Joanne, I don't know if you can speak more to this in the chat room, or I'm seeing your question. Um, what do we make of people saying you're responsible for your impact on others? Um, I, I'm if I'm. Let me just respond to that in the way that I think about being responsible for impact on others. And then if you want to say more in the chat room, Joanne, for Bill to look at, that'd be awesome. But, um, you know, there's a difference between, usually our, oftentimes our intent is different than our impact, first of all. And so to understand our intent and to share our intent, and to find out if our intent is being met is a really critical part of communication and, and of leadership. Simultaneously, there's understanding the impact. And often we don't ask or we're not listening for the impact and we, we're missing that, that there's a disconnect from intent and, intent and impact. Mm -hmm. And so um, I always, say that, I mean, if we are committed to leading, if we are committed to our leadership and developing ourselves as leaders, impact and intent are both absolutely critical. And in fact, impact might even be more important, right? Like people's perceptions, um, right or wrong, is a, it's not relevant. It's their perception. And their perception is going to um, uh, guide how, the, how we're impacting them. And so we have to understand people and how they listen, which means we have to be listening, right? A wise man once said to me, it doesn't matter what you said, Marty, sorry, Doc, what matters is what they heard. Mm -hmm. Listening is more important than speaking. Yeah, I love that. Um, and yeah, all, all these have been tools that I personally have learned uh, through the spiral method and, and are all kind of just built in. Some as kind of lessons during curriculum, others as things that kind of come up uh, through certain agreements, through the container that's held. Uh, and so, I guess kind of making a segue into kind of what is the spiral method that we are talking about. 
Um, you know, what I've found that it is, is it's this, it's this structured container for people to be seen, to be heard, to express authentically uh, what they truly feel and who they are. And uh, it, it is safe and it allows for um, conversations that might normally be emotionally charged to come from a place of, um, of openness and curiosity uh, for what can truly unfold when, uh, when that's allowed. Yeah, and so, and like, like we said earlier, the, the everything that we've been talking about today is embedded in the spiral method itself. So <clears throat> it's a practice. Right, we sit in a circle and there's a way that we go around and around and around in that and spiral in that circle um, such that we're practicing communication, we're practicing um, awareness of our triggers, honoring other people, curiosity, giving everyone floor time, um, managing our judgments, not agreeing and disagreeing, right? Like, um, well, thanks, Bill. Um, the, the, the design of the spiral method, you know, the, it's, it's designed to be easy. Anyone can facilitate spiral method once you've gone through the training program. Um, it is designed to be a, a light lift um, where you get to participate in the community. It's not um, standing up and, you know, having a PowerPoint presentation and teaching people about communication. It's sitting together in community, accessing collective wisdom together, up-leveling our awareness and our emotional intelligence and our skill sets and our capacity. Um, inside of the spiral method sessions, cult we cultivate trust deeply and swiftly. And what's fascinating, uh, you know, when, when we talk about vulnerability, my experience is people don't go, oh good, I wanna be vulnerable, sign me up right? And yet we, we love to be seen and to be heard. And so part of the design of spiral method is to allow vulnerability and allow people to step in in new ways that leave everyone nourished. Um, just seeing what else I want to say about this. Um, it is, it's a, it is a method for developing community and so everything that, um, anything that you're working on in your communities get to map with the spiral method, right? It might be leadership skills. It might be um, single mothers. It might be um, students that are working on a science project, right? Spiral method is going to be the community developer over time and you map it with whatever you're up to in that group. Um, I think I've spoken to most of this I mean, for coaches or consultants or people that want to create spiral method groups. There's also a whole um, revenue model for um, leading groups as part of your business. Yeah, and I'll just add something on there. Uh, you see flow state. And I think this goes back to something we talked about earlier that sometimes when we're triggered, uh, our mind shifts into our reptilian brain and, and we start to really feel the effects of it. And, and that's when we're more reactionary. Uh, but spiral method really puts us into a flow state where we're coming from this place of curiosity and love and it's and it's in flow and time uh, time seems to stop and uh, and it's really a special place something that you know sports can bring out of you that you know being in in this kind of perfect state of bliss uh, it, it truly does feel like that uh, within this container. Yeah, and another question here. Thank you, Sabrina. Um, does it work for virtual programming or just in person? Both. We've been doing Zoom spirals for the past three months, and we're also offering our, our um, certification program uh, virtually now as well. We had one last week or the week before, and um, it's, it's working just as well. It's, it's crazy. And um, I think there's, there's value in meeting face-to-face -face as well. I had one of my one of my groups met this morning face to face and it was so good to see each other, right? So um, we're looking at, uh, at hybrid models as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, there's some, uh, Leslie, I don't know if you wanna address a few of these comments from Joanne here um, around kind of triggers and impact and intent. Um, I think I already did. Okay, perfect. 
Yep. All right. And, yeah. Uh, let's see uh, what's next now that we're here. Lisa, how do, thank you for your How do we time. continue and apply? Um, so one is, is get spiral method certified. Uh, we recently just uh, completed an online certification uh, where we were able to come together as a community and build community, or excuse me, and use this community power to co-create uh, new leaders within this method. We practiced this methodology uh, as a group. We looked at uh, the tenets and principles and agreements and glossary of, uh, of terms that really build what this is. Uh, Leslie, uh, what else would you like to say about uh, this next certification coming up in August? Oh, I mean, I just, there are, we are so blessed. Some of the most uh, generous, heart-centered, committed, skilled leaders are coming forward for this. And so we're finding that the people that are getting certified are fiercely committed to community. I mean, that is bottom line. And what's really fascinating to me is that some, some of the folks that have been facilitators in corporate America and are cream of the crop facilitators in the nation are coming to Spiral Method going, wow, there's so much more that I'm learning about facilitating a group and what it looks like to be, um, be facilitating in a way that is easy and nourishing and that light lift that I spoke of. Um, there's so many subtleties to facilitating. Um, the other piece is um, the community that we're building. And so it's a lifelong platform. It's a lifelong group of heart-centered leaders. And people are collaborating together, uh, learning from each other. We have an ongoing six-week, uh, sorry, a six-week program after a certification as well to really solidify and ground all the learning from the two-day program. Yeah, and it, it was a game changer for me. I mean, I've been in community work for a while, and it's really shifted how I'm able to show up and, and create this space for, for true transformation. Mm -hmm. uh, and for all of you uh, that want to experience this firsthand, I'll be leading a free Spiral Method experience uh, next week at this same time, uh, Wednesday, July 8th, 11 a.m. Uh, you can register at spiralmethod.com slash spiralmethod-experience. Yep. And uh, for a little bit more on certification, as far as what you actually get and what this looks like, uh, Leslie, take us through it, please. Well, yeah, so you guys can read this. I'll just speak it quickly. It's, it's the full two days. The, in those days, we have live practice sessions and coaching. Sometimes we do that live, but we are sticking with virtual training right now for the full two days. Um, we've got a comprehensive manual. You get a certification stamp once you pass the assessment the facilitator network that I spoke of, just rich, rich group of people in our network. Um, we also have a half day business development session for those of you that are interested in generating revenue through Spiral Method peer groups uh, or bringing it back into your own companies. And I spoke to the six week coaching program as well. This is, um, only 1950 for the for all of this actually and um yeah i think that's it for now we'd love for you to join us um final closing comments for either of you uh i mean for me it's for me even this itself was a learning experience you know each conversation i go into i i try to approach with curiosity even though it's tough and, and sometimes and so coming back to these principles um, certainly will help me uh, continue to evolve. So thank you both. And go back to that picture, Bill. That was our yeah. February cohort. <laughs> Yay. All right. Well, you guys, we know everyone here are already heart-centered leaders. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of you are already heart-centered leaders. We'd love for you to come join us. Let us know if you have any questions and just thanks for being here and being part of the conversation. Okay. Thank you, everyone.